Right. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Assalatu wassalamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabi wa sallam. Welcome to our session 4 with Suratul Mulk. And we are on verse number 18. Okay, let's begin. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا إِلَى الطَّيْرِ فَوْقَهُمْ صَافَّاتٍ وَيَقْبِضْنَ مَا يُمْسِكُهُنَّ إِلَّا الرَّحْمَنِ إِنَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ بَصِيرٌ Have they not seen the birds above them spreading and folding their wings? None holds them except the most compassionate. Indeed, he is all-seeing of everything. So just reflecting on this, an idea is that when we are doing reflection, one of the things that we are focusing on is not the academics, not the, the beauty of the words, the connection with the previous ayats, and so on and so forth, but rather trying to make the reflections as practical as possible. So thinking about what actions, what qualities does this ayah reminds me that I can do in my life, or I can do better in my life, and so on and so forth. Does that tell me of any actions, any reminders? Um, the way to think about things, my mindset, how I look at the world, and so on and so forth. Uh, any promise of Allah in this verse? Uh, what do I learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that helps me to have a better understanding of who Allah is and how I should be with the creation of Allah? So as a quick example, some of the things that I probably wanted to highlight from today's salah, from Isha, for example, the qualities that were mentioned today was the importance of du'a, right? What the Shaykh recited, there were a lot of du'as and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing how the believers engage in asking Allah in, in different circumstances. So that's one action. The second quality that was mentioned today in Salatul Aisha was about the quality of dhikr. How the believers always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while standing, while sitting, while lying down, and so on and so forth. So then I, one would ask themselves that how much dhikr do I do? How much remembrance of Allah do I do while I'm scrolling on my phone, while I'm driving, while I'm doing my work and so on and so forth? How much aware I am of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Uh, another thing that was also mentioned was the concept of the khizi, the humility on the day of judgment. Right? So the believers asking Allah to protect them from the khiz of that day. So that's something also to think about that we think about embarrassing moments in this world, the games, the the soccers, the business world, what have you, but how would the embarrassment be on the Day of Judgment? So coming back to this verse, uh, wherever you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about His creation, that's a great reminder to think about, uh, am I connecting the creation of Allah to the Creator? Because we see birds, right? Sometimes we may appreciate the bird, we may appreciate the mountains, the rivers, the, the oceans, and so on and so forth, but am I also connecting it to the Creator, the designer of these things? how perfect he is, how powerful he is, all the different nuances of that design and so on and so forth. And then same thing can also apply on human creation because that's something that's also facilitated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is the one who is letting me benefit from those uh, creation. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the birds and as a beautiful creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And obviously if we, if we were to dig deeper because I've seen some documentaries here and there but I'm, I'm sure that I haven't done enough on that. It talks about how you know, smart the birds are in terms of their migration, how capable they are in terms of the long journeys they, they can travel, and so on and so forth. There's so many small details that you can actually learn about the different types of birds if you were to go and look into it. And who created those, the, those creatures with all the different needs and so on and so forth. So that helps you understand who our Lord is, how powerful He is, how merciful He is, not to just the human beings, but the small birds, the big birds, the larger birds, the, the creation in the sea, and so on and so forth. Um, and the second thing is, obviously, if you, if you think about the aircrafts and the Boeings and what have you, and how, how we appreciate them in their speed and their capacity and capabilities, a lot of that is obviously learned via birds. And not only that, the human minds behind it, the raw materials behind it, and all that is something that's also facilitated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The attributes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes and points to in this, these verse, in this verse is the attribute of mercy. So that tells us about how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And He's always merciful. That's an attribute that's always there. 
So the hukum, the ahkam, the rules, the law that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has laid down in place for us is not to make things hard for us. Rather, they're also a form of mercy for us as humanity, as society, and for the wider society and for the greater society, uh, greater benefit of the society. These are all from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then lastly, the element that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all seeing. So obviously, you know, we may be careful about when people are seeing us, but how do we behave when we are private in, in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Am I also guarding the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, or am I only guarding it when I'm around my family or around people and so on and so forth? And uh, that can obviously be expanded to many, many different areas from my worship of Allah, my uh, preserving the ahkam of Allah, the rules of Allah, to the fact that sometime, you know, I may be working hard, uh, you may be putting in effort, but you're not seeing the results. People may be not be appreciating you, the impact you may not see, and so on and so forth. But Allah sees the effort that you put in. And obviously, even for something as simple as, you know, working on the vocabulary or memorizing Quran, different people would have different level of efforts that they may be putting in. Some people may have to put extra effort just because where they are starting from. And Allah sees that all, and He uh, appreciates that all. So what I'll do is we'll do a few verses and then we'll open up so uh, so that hopefully everyone can share some actionable points on, on the verses that we have covered so far. So next one being, so these two questions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pointing out a very important question here to, uh, to think about who is it that can protect us against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to punish a nation or bring some sort of calamity, some sort of a test to a nation, to a group of people, to individuals, then who is it that can actually uh, protect it? Again, protect someone from against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's something, obviously at one extreme you have the kuffar, the disbelievers, those who oppose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who fight Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know, diminish or try to put down the religion. By the same time, even as regular people who are believers, who do worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sometimes we may get carried away and be afraid of different people, whether it be our friends or family members or employers or clients and so on and so forth. So sometimes you may have this subconscious fear that, you know what, I have to please them. I have to make them happy. I cannot you know, hold on to my principles because if I do, I fear that I may lose some worldly benefit. And that can apply in any capacity that you are in. Even when you're in Dawa and the work of the deen, to running a nonprofit, to being in a regular corporation, to being a father, a mother, and so on and so forth. Am I afraid of the other human beings? And is that causing me subconsciously to please them because I want some sort of success and benefit from them and I am displeasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So that's just something uh, to think about that we cannot achieve whatever we want to achieve and we cannot have protection from the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except by what Allah has written for us. And similarly, the concept of rizq. So any benefit, any benefit that Allah has written for us from some as simple as education, wisdom, skills, finances, children, spouses, happiness, all these are different forms of risk, whether it be emotional risk, financial risk, intellectual risk, you know, uh, capacity and capability risk, whatever it is, it's all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah wants to hold it, then who is it that can actually extend it for you, that can actually make it happen for you? So when people transgress, obviously they're trying to chase something. They're trying to chase comfort, happiness, you know, uh, relationships and so on and so forth trying to chase that while disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah is asking who can extend it for you if Allah prevents that risk from coming to you? And who can prevent it from coming to you if Allah wants that to happen? So the, the disbelieving ones, the ones who are uh, you know, in their arrogance, in their aversion, they're just continuing in that. However, it does not really uh, benefit them. Okay. 
Then the next one, mustaqim. So here Allah is using a parable, right? So the one, someone who is upright, he knows where he is going, his focus, he knows the path, he understands the path, he's walking upright. Is he the same as the one who doesn't know where he's going? He's crawling, he's not upright, he's not using his full facilities, the full capabilities that Allah has given him, right? The one who is rightly guided is the one who is walking up upright and straight. And the one who is misguided, he's confused, he's chasing different philosophies that are designed by human beings, right? This ism or that ism, you know, uh, just chasing human defined philosophies is like the one who is walking uh, on his face. His face or her face. So, the, so that's just that parallel to think about. Like when you are following the guidance from Allah, the value from Allah, the, the culture from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you have that upright knowledge, the, found, the firm knowledge that is guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or you're just like trying different things. So before we go into the next few verses, inshallah, any, uh, any comments, reflections, ideas where how we can apply this in our life? How it can help us think better, do better, habits, qualities. Let's see. Let's get a few. One, one, and then we can move on. You can just repeat what I said too. Then that will also confirm that it worked. So, what, what do you think, right? Um, the qualities or, or the name? How? What? Okay. What? What does the name of Allah subhanahu? The the name, the attribute of Allah is Ar-Rahman. What does that tell you, in terms of your life? How can it make you think better or act better with the creation of Allah? Or what can someone be doing wrong who doesn't understand that Allah is Ar-Rahman? So, that, and okay, so that if you were to continue that, then one thing is also that how can we be more merciful with each other as well? Right, so that, that's another thing that we can take it forward. If, if Allah is a Rahman, where can I demonstrate mercy in my life where I may not be? And right, being forgiving, being merciful, kind, generous. Okay, All right, how about the attribute of being al Basir, right, all seeing? You know, how does that change one's life? So one way of thinking about like, okay, what qualities would someone do? What action would they do? How would they look at life differently if they understood and were conscious and aware that Allah is Al-Basir versus someone who forgets about it or doesn't believe in it or doesn't know? Yes. Be more conscious of their actions. Mm -hmm. Yep. So more conscious of like, you know, what we are doing, what we are saying, how we are spending time. Okay, good. Um, let's see. We make it in questions form. Okay, again, so thinking about this concepts, right? Someone who doesn't understand that the risk, any type of risk, as we said, emotional, financial, any sort of risk, uh, intellectual, is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, how can that person be? As in provision? Yeah, provision, yeah. So if someone really believes that it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or is it someone you know, who may be forgetting about it or not believing in it, you know, what, what, how would the lifestyle, the qualities, the habits may be different? Uh, so we, we start believing that this is coming from Allah. <coughs> we stop worrying about all these things and start focusing on what we just need to do instead of worrying about, like, what we have to do or where the money needs to come from. Mm -hmm. Yes. See. So yes, that that gives you a different mindset, right? A lot of worries, anxiety can kick in because the lack of tapping into that. That look, it's it's all written. It's going to be all fine. And then you are focusing on what can I do, right? What am I not doing? What can I do better? What can I do more of? 
as opposed to, oh, why don't I have this? Why does he have this? Why does she have this? And I don't have this. Okay, beautiful. Good. Anyone else? True. Yes, I think that's that's a very good reminder, Jazakallah bro. And that that's the concept of du'a, right? Because sometimes we have a way less emphasis on du'a and talking to Allah, and we may be hustling way more with the human beings, right? Whether it be you know applying for jobs or contracts or clients or investments or selling stuff, which is okay. These are part of the you know the process. However, like what's that sort of balance, right? Do we first go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do I actually also, you know, uh, spend time in asking Allah or is it just hustling and asking human beings? Okay, good, good, good participation. Okay, let's do, I think we can do two more. Yeah, we'll do two more and then we'll do the word by word. قُلْ هُوَ الَّذِي أَنشَأَكُمْ وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَالْأَفْئِدَةَ قَلِيلًا مَا تَشْكُرُونَ قُلْ هُوَ الَّذِي ذَرَأَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَإِلَيْهِ تُحْشَرُونَ So these are really two beautiful verses. And I think if we, if we were to be aware of these, this could really make a big difference. Say, O Prophet Wasallam, He is the one who brought you into being and gave you hearing, sight, and intellect. Yet, you hardly give any thanks. And say, He is the one who has dispersed you, spread you out all over the earth, and to Him you will all be gathered. And that's a you know, very summarized and simple way of describing what this life is about and how many people are deluded. So in this one, that Allah is the one who is our creator and he has actually given us all the facilities and faculties that we have of hearing and seeing and the heart and so on and so forth. And as we saw in the previous worlds, all the risk we have, all the provision we have is also from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's a very, very different mindset than someone actually thinks that, oh, this is mine, this is me as opposed to thinking that this is from Allah and it's my choice how I use it, okay? So if I were to give an example, let's say I say, you know what, brother, what do you do? Okay, you, you, you have a job, you're working. Okay, forget your job, I'll give you this much money. You know, you start your own business, provide the service you do or start up a shop or e-business, whatever, right? Now the question is you understand that this is the funds that I'm giving you as an investor or what have you, and you are thinking, okay, how I'm going to use it? How, how can I make more money off it, right? That's my intention, right? To grow the business, to have more in, more revenue, what, whatever, right? Or I say, okay, you know what? I'll pay for your school, a scholarship, what have you. But now your task is not to worry about the fees, but to get good grades, you know, learn the skills, get the education, and then, you know, give it out to others. So somebody who understands that, that these are the resources that Allah has given me, my time, my life, my faculties, then his thing would be like, how do I use it to please my creator? And the other mentality that we have, is, this is mine, I can do whatever I want with my life, I can do whatever I want with my body, I can, I just have this, all these choices. That's a different mentality of someone who doesn't get these basic, that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what, what is it that we should do with that is we have to be grateful. And that's something that shaitan actually promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you will not find most of them Grateful. That you will not find most of them grateful. So what is gratefulness? What is being grateful means? The scholars have defined it. And if you want to understand being grateful, firstly, is that you are grateful from your heart. You understand that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not because of my hard work, my own efforts, my hustling and my patience and this and that. It is actually from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second thing, obviously, from your tongue as well. Right? You praise Allah, you thank Allah for what you have. Uh, and then lastly, is you use what Allah has given you in Allah's obedience and not in His disobedience. So Allah has given you flexibility, Allah has given you risk and different provision. You use it to praise Allah, to, be, to, to, to stay in the halal, right? Actually being in the halal and then using it to do the, um, the mustahibbar, right? To do the things that are recommended to grow from there. 
So that's, that's part of being grateful. If you're saying, okay, I can do whatever I want, I'll transgress, I'll do what I feel good about it, what makes me feel good, what makes my friends feel good, then that's a different mentality. And then the point again that Allah is, you know, brought, uh, put us in this earth, spread us around, but to remember that there is an accountability, there is a return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's where final justice will be committed. So this world is not necessarily, a, it's not a place of full justice. So it doesn't mean that people who have more of these resources, that Allah loves them more, or the people who don't have it, does not mean that Allah loves them less. So you, will ha you may have some recompense in this world, but the final recompense will only happen on the day of judgment when you're actually going to be returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so talked a lot. Let me hear from you guys on these two. Let's get maybe two and two, and then we'll wrap up and go to uh, Arabic. And as we hear about it, I think there is tea as well. So if you want to grab that, that's fine too. And we can also get some uh, comments as well. So do this transition from reflection to Quranic Arabic. That's, that's fine. You, you can just repeat them. And that, that at least tells me that, okay, it was communicated, right? Okay. So <laughs> or you can give me a different example. The Prophet is saying, I mean, Allah is saying to the Prophet that um, He gave us all these little things, or some of the things that we think are little, all these great scriptures He just mentioned, such as the sight, the intellect, and everything. And yet, we are being, we hardly give thanks to the great creator for all these qualities. Some of us don't have it, some of us have it in abundance more than the other, and yet we do not appreciate some of these blessings. And sometimes we do go as far as comparing our faith or some of these scriptures with those of the other, which we shouldn't do. Since um, we are all going to be judged based on different things, why then should we look at some of the blessings? Or that have, even though it's just the sight, the hearing, the mental faculty, we are more intelligent than each other, more knowledgeable on certain topics. All these things, we should all be grateful for them. We can't be jack of all trade or master of all. But the little ones we do have, either be it sight from our short sighted, be grateful. Some have sight on both eyes or just one eye, be grateful. And some are even blind, we have to still be grateful in all conditions. Beautiful. So bring this world to the advances of creating us. Yeah, so I don't know if you realize, so one, you mentioned a very important theme that I did not even touch about, right? And that's, 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 that's the whole point of reflection, because you may think of an angle that I. Haven't, I, I haven't been thinking about right now, right? Because it depends on what, what's going on, what you are thinking about. So the brother mentioned a very beautiful angle, and that's the angle of comparison. Because sometimes you may look at someone else, and you may think that, oh, okay, you know what? I, I'm working harder than him. I'm working harder than her. How come she has more? How come he has more? And I don't. And I'm, I'm praying more than him. I'm more, you know, uh, compliant to the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How come he or she has more? So that's one thing. First of all, the distribution is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And then Allah may give more to some and less to some. It does not necessarily mean that the more prayers you do, the more financial, the more worldly resources you will have. And then the second thing is also, which is from a very prophetic advice, is to look at the people that are below you. So you, you know, sometimes we are just comparing, oh, I'm working so hard, and then you know, how come he or she has more? But we're not looking at how we are 10x or 100x better than the other guy who, who doesn't have as much, and maybe putting in way more work than us. And I think this also leads to a lot of uh, dissatisfaction that can also lead to people, you know, not obeying Allah and kind of running away from Allah. Something similar that happens in the workplace or in volunteering organization or whatever, whichever uh, community you're into, you might see that someone who may be not working as hard, they're getting the promotion, they're getting a bigger bonus, and you're not. That may cause some sort of dissatisfaction based on how you're measuring it. So similar things can happen. May Allah protect us when you are thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's important that we're not just looking at people who are above us, but also look at how Allah has blessed us and made, made us comfortable compared to a lot of others who are not. So very good point. Let's take, yes. This verse reminds us who is Allah. Right, so that's that's uh, that's uh, focusing on one of the other promises from Allah that being grateful not only 
you know, gives you the rewards and, 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 and hasanat and gets you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but rather Allah will actually increase you and give you more of what you have. So that's one actual way of increasing what Allah has given you by being grateful, by being obedient with what Allah has given us. Okay, great. So we'll stop the session here. We'll move on to the Quranic Arabic. There is tea here, so if, if the sisters can grab it in a minute or two, then we'll pass it on to the brothers. And then in the meantime, I'll switch the stream to the next session, inshallah.